Hey guys, today we're going to show you how to get started with Git hooks, and I'm going to show you some that are there. If you're not familiar with Git hooks, what they are are a way to run logic, such as maybe the test or um, you know spelling check or a linting check, all that sort of stuff in our application before we do a commit or before we do a push or after we do these things. It really just depends. There's a bunch of different hooks. And if you've ever looked at the documentation, this is it right here for customizing Git hooks. It's, it just looks a lot like a a lot of black magic there's not really any code examples and it's really kind of hard to get going and you gotta learn bash scripts but luckily there's a nice package called husky which is pretty popular it has 2.8 million weekly downloads i've used it in pretty much all my projects nowadays and we're going to add this to the application i'm going to show you the more common use cases and i'm even going to show you a, a cool little um cool little script I use called branch naming check that I'm a fan of. Uh, and we're going to get going in our application, make sure we have Git hooks and increase the quality of our app. So let's go ahead and get going. Get it? We're going to get going because it because of Git hooks. <laughs> I'd like to take a moment to thank our long-term sponsor, Dev Mountain Coding Bootcamp. I've been partnering up with Dev Mountain for a couple of years now, and I've had the chance to see multiple campuses and housing. I've been really impressed. Dev Mountain has a couple different programs from web dev to iOS development, software QA, and UX design. Some are after hours part-time programs, and some are fully immersive programs where they actually include housing at no additional cost so you can get up and go. If you're interested in finding out more, there's a link in the description below. All right, guys, so um, to get started with Husky, let's just first understand what it is that we're working on. Not that it's super relevant, but I wrote this site in about two hours that I needed to just really create a homepage, uh, dylanisrael.com, right? Just my quote-unquote portfolio site that not really doing anything. Uh, but um, that's what we're going to be adding it, adding these Git hooks to using Husky. Now, we've already talked about in the first part of this video why we're going to do it. Now let's see how easy it is to do it using Husky. Now, first thing we need to do is we need to install that as a dependency. So Husky is the name of the dependency. And you know what? I already messed up. Uh, this should actually be a dev dependency. Tree shaking will catch this, but we want to have this in a dev dependency because it's not going to matter. It's not something that's going to go to production. This is really a qual automated quality procedure. So let's go ahead and just move this down here uh, for good practices and things like that. Okay, so now that we've added Husky to the app, the way that we can go and configure it is pretty simple. Let's go ahead and close this for a second. Within our, not our scripts, not our dependencies, not our dev dependencies, but within Husky itself, we have an object. And within here, we have hooks. The two most common hooks that you're going to use, um, really, and these are the only, I, I should say, these are the, the most common and the only ones I have used is pre-commit, which means something's going to happen before we commit that this, whatever we put in here has to successfully pass. And then we have pre pre-push. Before we go and we push, we want to make sure that something happens successfully. Okay, so what is it that we want to do? Well, let's say that before we um, before we commit, we want to make sure our test pass. The same thing for pre-push. And uh, later on in the video, we'll show you some of my more favorite um, uh, items that we can add to these git hooks, but let's keep it pretty simple. Before we do that, let's go ahead and see that we have this test no watch which essentially what's happening here is this is an angular application so it's using the angular cli hence the ng test this is saying run te run our test script uh run run the angular cli test but don't don't re just run them one time right this is what this watch false means so do that when we do a commit we want to do npm run test colon no watch Now, let's go ahead and get rid of this pre-push for now. And I believe if we go to, was it the navigation component? And we go and we have a test here. Let's just say, um, instead of this being defined, let's expect two plus three to be four, right? 
Um, obviously, this is going to be 5, and so that's going to fail. So what's going to happen here is let's go ahead and stage our changes. Let's go ahead and commit our changes. And when we go and we say um, should not commit. You see it's going to fire off this husky pre-commit and then it's going to fire off what's in there. In this case it's our ng test watch false. Now uh, I'm using Jasmine so a browser might pop up real quick um, but uh, in the future I'll probably switch this over to Jest and not have to deal with it. I personally like Jest better and nowadays the, the Chrome browser isn't something that I really even want to deal with. Okay, cool. So you can see here that our test has failed. That when we go, okay, our test failed and thus our commit never went through. So you can see here husky pre-commit hook failed. Um, add dash dash no verify to bypass. So we could skip if we want to but that sort of defeats the purpose. So now if we go and we our commit never happened we put this back to this simple test that Oh, now we got to import again. We put it back to this simple test. We have to commit it again, where we go over here, should commit. It's going to run that. It's going to fire off our test that we have here. And voila, it will it'll pass this time. It'll commit successfully because it's met our criteria. And now if we wanted to, we could go ahead and do a git push. We don't have anything in pre-push. But now we've been able to automate something that we want to make sure happens before we do a commit real easy in our dev uh, dependency. Now, let's go ahead and showcase some of uh, some cool packages that I've used with Git hooks for the push to make sure that we're not having any any issues and making sure that we're having the highest quality of code. All right, so let's go ahead and add pre push back to our application here and we want to run a branch name check. Now there's a nice package that we can use called branch naming check. Every workplace I've ever worked at has had a PBI, like a way that they've gone about and said, hey, I want this to be, you know, I want our PBIs to be uh, maybe PBI dash whatever the ticket number is dash your name or something like that. We're going to enforce that. If we can automate stuff, that's fantastic. So let's go ahead and check out something. Uh, check out a branch here and we'll call it Dylan failure. Uh, not that, not like me particularly, but uh, an example of why this would happen. So let's go ahead and install uh, dash dash only equal dev. I believe is it now branch dash naming dash check. Now, if you want to go and look at the documentation, let me go ahead and showcase it to you here. Uh, branch naming check, git hook. Uh, here we go. So this is just a nice little thing that allows us to pass a regex in that says, hey, go ahead and validate the name of my branch. Now we're not going to go into creating git hooks and all that sort of stuff, but if you go in, into the code, you can so, sort of see what's happening here. It's going to go and validate. It's going to do you know so on and so forth, and then you're going to have to put it in the .git file. And um, we'll do a whole another lecture on creating your own git hooks. Right now, what we want to showcase is Husky and how it makes it easy for us. And this is something that's already written that I I like quite a bit. Now, in here we're going to call that. Uh, that method that we just installed, branch naming, oops, dash check. Now, what we're going to follow up with is a regular expression here that's going to be, let's say you do, um, what do you want to do? Uh, let's say we start off with a, um, we want to start, so here's a little regular expression, start with story or PBI. Let's say that's what we want to start with. And then we want to do a dash and then we'll escape here and do a D plus, which is basically a series, any series of numbers. And then we have an optional, another dash, uh, followed by pretty much everything else on the end here. Okay. 
cool quite a bit going on here but essentially what we're saying here is we want to we want an example to be something like this story dash one two three four dash anything after that could be anything or we want it to be pbi dash one two three four dash anything that's how we want to format our branch names and so what's going to happen here uh oh uh just overwrite okay so what's going to happen here if we added our dev dependency correctly which it did not Let's go ahead and close this and reinstall so it adds it. Uh, I think I added it to the wrong section. Uh, Sorry, you shouldn't be editing your package JSON while you're working in your package JSON. Uh, oh, that should add it down here. Anyhow, uh, maybe they changed the way that's called. Um, okay, so we have our branch name in check. Now, let's go ahead and we'll stage the changes. It's going to, when we commit here, it's going to go ahead and uh, we'll say added branch naming check. It's going to run our test because we have our pre-commit here. But now, once this passes in a second here, which it should, we're going to go ahead and do a push. All right, so now when we push, because uh, we haven't created this branch yet, go ahead and copy that, paste that in there. What should happen is, what happened here? That shouldn't have worked. Ch -ch -ch branch, naming check. Let me put this in, uh, put it up here just to see if that has any impact. And we'll comment this out for a second. Don't want to run the test each time. Test, get push. Pre-push should have ran. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. Can't find Husky skipping. Oh, so Husky got removed. No, no, can't find Husky. Husky's right here. Can't find branch naming check. Interesting. Did I spell it wrong? That would explain why it failed. Huh. Why would that fail? Can't find branch name in check. So I learned something very interesting about Husky that I'm gonna share with you here as I went and debugged. So one thing to note about Husky is that if you've added an additional check here, you actually need to do an install, a fresh install. Uh, so like for instance, we didn't have pre-push with anything when we installed last and the reason that this is causing issues is that it goes and actually creates these files on install because uh, each one of these is uh, if you were to dive deep into our let's let's go and give an example here so if we were to dive deep I think it's look for Dylan which is gonna come up with a ton of stuff but if we go into Dylan Israel now if we go into desktop Dylan is real site. You see where this dos git folder and these hooks and all this. So essentially what's happening is these all all these are hooks. This is if you were to go in and and uh, write your own git hooks manually, these would be the files that you would be editing. So without that install, it doesn't actually go and add this git hook, which is why I was saying it's not defined. However, now that we have installed and we go and we do a git stage dot 
git commit dash m and the, this should fail. Uh, we do a push now. It's going to go ahead and it's going to fail. And you can see that um, Husky push prehook failed. Uh, and so what we need to do now, using the following format for the branch's name, let's go ahead and git checkout dash b. And this time we'll do story dash uh, 1234 dash d money let people know and we're gonna uh we're gonna now push now we gotta push the upstream and this will validate on sending the upstream and a regular push all, all pushes essentially and now we go ahead and everything passes and voila so let's go ahead and add our pre pre-commit hook back and in here we'll do npm run test colon no watch and what we've been able to do is we've been able to go and not only run our test before we commit but also validate our branch name check here okay cool in the next video what we're going to be showcasing is how to actually spell check our app uh, using a nice little library called cspell and I'll show you how to set that up as well as how to add it to our hooks to make sure that we don't put any spell spelling issues in the application add just an additional level of quality hey guys thanks for watching the video don't forget to check out my latest course the 100 front-end interview questions challenge to make sure that you ace those front-end interviews smash that like and subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next video thanks for watching